Welcome to a Legendarium special about the history of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. In this episode, we will talk about the ancient Egyptian writing system and how European scholars decoded it. Next to the pyramids, the Sphinx, and mummies, one of the most famous discoveries from ancient Egypt is a form of writing. It appears like stylized pictures of people, animals, and objects. Hieroglyphic writing, whose name comes from hieroglyphikos, the Greek word for sacred carving, have been found carved into stone walls more than 5,000 years old. Hieroglyphics continue to be used through the Roman era. Yet the earliest hieroglyphic writing is found on grave goods like ivory plaques and pottery jars. Craftsmen placed them in royal tombs at the sacred city of Abydos before pharaohs ruled a united Egypt. These early hieroglyphs likely served as pictorial writing, with a bird symbol standing in for a bird, a cow symbol for a cow, and so forth. For the rest of their history, hieroglyphics would be used in a religious context, often engraved in temples and tombs. Indeed, hieroglyphs would become known as the words of the gods, and in time, people rich enough to employ stone carvers could have hieroglyphics carved into their own burial places to secure the safety of their souls. Because the symbols used in hieroglyphic writing look like little pictures of people, animals, and objects, it is easy to assume that hieroglyphs represent those things. Instead, some hieroglyphs are sounds in the ancient Egyptian language, just like the characters in the Roman alphabet are. Others are ideographic signs, which represent ideas or concepts, such as monarchy. Hieroglyphic writing also has odd quirks. It has no spaces between the words and there is no punctuation. Readers must know something about the message to tell individual words, sentences, and chapters apart. Unlike modern English, hieroglyphics are not always read horizontally from left to right. Hieroglyphics could be written either from right to left or even vertically or horizontally. Finally, the hieroglyphic script included a total of 1,000 characters, rather than the 26 found in the Latin alphabet. Even the simplest writing required a knowledge of 450 hieroglyphic symbols. Unsurprisingly, not many Egyptians knew how to read hieroglyphic writing, yet learning it became the key to success. Schools taught generations of scribes this vast and complex language. Teachers frightened students into studying by claiming that working as a jeweler led to lost fingers and that smiths choked to death in their own furnaces. Yet if they completed the five to seven year course, students would be assured of a place at the top of Egyptian society along with exemption from taxes. In fact, a scribe always had to be at the pharaoh's side to write down anything he said because everything the god king of Egypt said was important. The badge of the scribe's trade became his palette, a narrow rectangle of wood with depressions for ink. This palette, together with a tube-shaped container for reed stems used as pens, formed the hieroglyphic sign for a scribe. Craftsmen made ink from finely ground pigment mixed with a light gum and formed it into small tablets like poster paints. Chewing the end of a fresh reed splayed the fibers to form a brush pen, which would be dipped into the water of a tortoise shell bowl before being swirled over the dry ink block to take up the color, and then the scribe could begin his work. Because hieroglyphic writing grew so complicated, the ancient Egyptians made other types of writing. Hieratic writing, a cursive script written on papyrus with a pen or brush, or on a piece of limestone came into use. Demotic, another form of writing, developed in the 800s BC, and it appeared on both everyday documents and literary works. 
During the 300s BC, one of Alexander the Great's commanders, Ptolemy, founded a Macedonian dynasty which ruled Egypt for three centuries. In that time, Greek replaced Egyptian as the official court language. Nonetheless, most of the government workers and scribes remained Egyptian, who continued using hieroglyphics in one form or another. Finally, in 384 AD, the Christian Roman Emperor Theodosius passed a decree that banned pagan religion from being practiced in Egypt. This marked the beginning of the end for hieroglyphics. By the time that scribes carved the last known hieroglyphic writing into the Philae Temple in 394 AD, few Egyptian sculptors even understood what their masters asked them to carve into the walls. Thus, knowledge of hieroglyphic script faded away and remained all but extinct for 1,400 years. Finally, in 1799, French soldiers serving under Napoleon in Egypt repaired a fort in the town of Rashid, also called Rosetta. While working, they discovered a stone slab that became known as the Rosetta Stone. It included writing in three different scripts, hieroglyphs, demotic script, and ancient Greek. The three languages were engraved upon a single stone and allowed researchers to begin deciphering the hieroglyphic writing. British scientist Thomas Young, who began studying the stone in 1814, realized that some of the symbols served as phonetic spellings of royal names, which he was familiar with. And between 1822 and 1824, French linguist Jean-Francois Champollion showed that hieroglyphics served as a combination of phonetic and ideographic symbols. His deep study of Coptic, a language used among Egyptian Christians, allowed him to spot grammar that Young did not. He then deciphered the text, a message from Egyptian priests to Ptolemy V, written in 196 BC. Even to this day, ancient Egyptian language is not fully understood, and interpreting hieroglyphics involves educated guesses. This has made all the more difficult that hieroglyphs themselves slowly changed over time, just as language can change through the centuries. Reading them aloud is not as easy as the movies make it look. While the script is written out, the vocalization remains unknown for certain, except for some educated guesses. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.